Hey guys, my name is Brian Fulda, and I go by Absorbing Photons on the internet, and I'm a deep sky astrophotographer. Today, I'm gonna to be telling you five tips on how to get started in deep sky astrophotography. Okay, so for our first tip, we're gonna talk about what kind of gear you need to do deep sky astrophotography. You might have gotten started with regular astrophotography with a camera and a lens on a tripod, and that's awesome, but unfortunately, you're gonna need something a little bit more beefier than that to get into deep sky astrophotography. You're gonna need some kind of equatorial mount like I have here. These come in many sizes. This is a huge one, obviously, but there are smaller ones called star trackers that are really great for just a camera and a lens. You're gonna need some kind of optic, whether that be a telescope like I have here, or a telephoto camera lens. And last but not least, you're going to need your DSLR or mirrorless camera, or you can use a dedicated astronomy camera like I have right here. So my second tip is to plan, plan, and then do some more planning. There are four things you're gonna to need to plan for when doing any astrophotography shoot. Number one, your location. Choosing a place with a dark sky is really important for deep sky astrophotography. I like to use this website called lightpollutionmap.info to find dark sky sites. If you can't escape the city or you don't have a car or something like that, there are always light pollution filters that can help you cut through the sky glow. The second thing you're gonna to need to plan for is weather. Weather plays a huge role in astrophotography and you're probably gonna learn more about weather than you ever have before. My favorite sites to scout for the weather are weather.gov if you're in the US, an app called Astrospheric if you're in North America, or if you're not in North America, there's a really good website called Meteo Blue that generally has good weather predictions for the rest of the world. The third thing you're gonna to need to plan for is the moon phase. If the moon is full or close to being full, it's gonna wash out the sky and you're not gonna be able to see many stars. And that also affects your astrophotography images. So I recommend going to do your astrophotography around new moon, if at all possible. You're also gonna to have to plan for what time of year your desired target is coming up. For example, if you wanna photograph the Milky Way, in the north of, northern hemisphere at, at least, you're gonna to need to photograph that during the summertime. It's not gonna be really seen during the winter, at least the core of the Milky Way. If you wanna photograph the Andromeda Galaxy, that's a classic fall target. If you wanna photograph the Orion Nebula, that's also a classic winter target. So do a little bit of planning in advance to figure out what time of year your target is going to be up. Tip number three is properly balancing your mount. Having a balanced mount is extremely important in deep sky astrophotography. And what I mean by that is, I have something called an equatorial mount here. You have your optics on the one side, and then on the other side of an equatorial mount, you have your counterweights right here. So a properly balanced mount means that your tracking performance is going to be as best as it can be. If your mount isn't properly balanced, then it's going to put unwanted torque on the gears inside of this equatorial mount, and your tracking performance is going to suffer, which limits how long you can take exposures for. This is what a properly balanced mount looks like. So basically I can move the telescope to anywhere I want and it will stay in that position. You'll wanna make sure it's balanced in multiple axes. So the declination axis and the right ascension axis. So once you've got your mount properly balanced, the next step is to do a perfect polar alignment. One mistake I see a lot of beginners making is they don't spend enough time getting their polar alignment as best as it could be, and therefore their tracking suffers as a result. Polar alignment is essentially the process of aligning your equatorial mount's right ascension axis, this axis right here, you can kind of see imagine an imaginary line here, with one of the two celestial poles. So in the Northern Hemisphere, we're lucky enough to have Polaris, which is pretty close to the North Celestial Pole. And that's a really good indicator to go by if you're just using a star tracker or something like that. So the reason polar alignment is so important is it really affects your tracking over a long period of time if you don't have it perfect. So I recommend spending whatever it takes to get your polar alignment perfect. It's taken me as little as five minutes, and other times it's taken me as much as an hour. 
but whatever it takes, just take the time and get it right the first time, and then you can not worry about it all night long. My fifth tip is to just simply take your time. This is a bit more of an arbitrary tip, but I think it really comes into play with astrophotography. Another mistake that I see a lot of beginners making is they're so excited to shoot all these different targets that they jump from one target to the next every hour throughout the night. And you only get about, I don't know, 30 to 45 minutes of data on one target. And then all of a sudden you go to process it and it doesn't look very good because you didn't get enough exposure time on that target. My recommendation is if you're just starting out, just stick with one target all night long, maybe two at the most. I find that my best astrophotography images come when I actually take the time to gather as much data as I possibly can on one target. That produces the cleanest and most detailed images you can possibly get. Another way taking your time is really important is setting up and tearing down. I really recommend getting to wherever you're going to be imaging from early. Get there at like two or three in the afternoon, set up your gear, get it roughly pointed north, and then you can kind of just take your time and get everything perfect. And as soon as Polaris is out, you can start polar aligning and get everything ready to go. So by nightfall, you can start imaging right away. Okay guys, that about wraps it up for my five tips on how to get started in deep sky astrophotography. I hope you found them helpful. I think there's a ton to talk about with deep sky astrophotography and I didn't have time to cover it all but hopefully these fundamentals will get you started and feeling confident to get your first great deep sky images. Take care and I'll see you next time.